Okay, let me go jump right into programming. Um, this is yet another clerk employee who has uh, wears several hats, uh, both in the community, she and her husband. Um, Wendy Johnson is a registered tax professional and with more than 35 years of experience preparing personal and small business taxes. She actually grew up in the village of Maywood. It, it's just astounding uh, when I see her online and what have you, all the different people that she knows that I know. So she grew up in Maywood. While attending school, she ran her parents' grocery store as a cashier and a bookkeeper. And so she was taught by her father with understanding the importance of having your own business, how to manage your own money. What a concept. After completing high school, she became a resident of City Chicago and worked for several insurance industries as a clerk while attending college. She always had the passion for numbers, solutions, and logic to overcome challenges. There's a lot of moving parts to taxes, and you know the laws change all the time, but uh, as a professional, Wendy, she keeps up with those so that she can do the best thing possible for her clients. She has a AS degree in business administration from Malcolm X College, later graduated with, from MSTA Business College. Beyond being a tax professional, she also became immersed in social service, and she and her husband have a business on the west side of Chicago that focuses in on social services and health care. Without further ado, let me introduce all of you, although uh, she may know many of you that are from Maywood. Uh, Wendy, Wendy, are you there? Yeah, there she is. Uh, I'm here. Wendy, Wendy? Hi, I'm here. Hey, Can you hear me? Hey. Hello? Yes, we can hear Hello. you. Hello. Okay. Hi, everybody. Can we put us? Oh, there we go. There we go. Here. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay. I'm going to talk about Good today. Can we put a spotlight on Wendy. We're working on it over here, having a few little difficulties. So. Let me speak, um, Wendy. We'll look at yeah. this. So month, we're doing everything in con consumer protection. And so um, last yeah. week we heard from the AG's office. Today we're going to hear from Wendy. And the rest of the programs for this month will be focused on consumer protection and um, how people can, you know, sometimes people can just be their own best advocate. If they know better, they certainly can do better. So uh, that was our plan for uh, this month. Next month, we're going to be talking about veteran services. And so for those of you who have interest in that area, um, we're lining up people right now to speak to us on veterans services. With that, without that uh, further ado, Wendy's up and ready to go. Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to be talking to give you a about Wait a minute, something's wrong. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it's garbled. Garbled? Well, I don't know. Is that everybody else here? It's muffled. It's muffled, Wendy. We can't hear you that well. Um, you probably have to go to your actual seat and do it. Mm, hold on. I got it up. It says your with um your iPods network with band is low. Um, can we get staff over there to help her with um with what she's trying to do there? So I'm on my iPad. Okay, I, I can hear you better now. You can? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Let me know if you can't. Okay, today we're going to be talking about hiring a professional tax preparer, current issues, new things to look out for, scams, what you don't know can hurt you, and tax deadlines and question and answers. 
Okay, our current issues. Issues are year to year based on upcoming tax code and tax laws. Currently, we are experiencing a wind, whirlwind from last year blowing over the, into the year's tax season. On top of this, the IRS workers are scrambling to implement multiple provision of stimulus and recalculating taxes on unemployment benefits that were signed on March 11. Listed are the current issues for 2020 tax season. Stimulus payments. There have been two rounds of stimulus payments and a proposal for a third stimulus, which was passed by Congress on March 6, which some of you guys have already received those. The backlogs, if you can, file electronically. But if you can't be prepared for a long wait for any refunds, the IRS received roughly 16 million individual paper return last year and still working its way through a huge backlog of mail returns and correspondence. Mail is handled as, as it comes in, so new mail gets placed at the back of the line. The IRS staffing, because I can barely see the bottom part here, tax prepare will face more frustration because the IRS force is Okay, look like something. Of course, it's where they behind in them. In addition to the regular workload and normal issues that come with the tax season, staff members are dealing with poor coronavirus related to slowdowns as they contend with social distancing mandates. There are also the added responsibility of dealing with stimulus payment problems. And this is consistently going on right now as we speak. New things to look for, look out for, earn income tax credit. The earn income tax credit helps low to moderate income workers and families reduce their taxes as can result in a refund. To claim the credit, you have to have earned income. Here's the problem from people who are typically qualified to claim the credit. You can't count unemployment benefits toward qualifying for the EITC, which is the earning income tax credit. So to address the high number of people who lost their jobs because of the pandemic, the Taxpayer Certainty and Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2020 expanded eligibility for the earning income tax credit, allowing people to use their 2019 earned income. And this is me if you are under what you made last year in the earn income tax credit. You can actually use the earn income from the last year and get that credit to get more of your refund. Recovery and rebate credit. Taxpayers may be able to claim the recovery rebate credit if they met the eligibility requirements in 2020 and one of the following applies to them. They didn't receive an economic impact impact payment in 2020, they are single and their payment was less than 1,200. They are married, filed jointly for 2018 or 2019 and their payment was less than 2,400. They didn't receive the 500 for each qualifying child. Refund interest payment. People who receive a federal tax refund in 2020 may have to been paid interest. The IRS sent interest payments to individual taxpayers who timely filed their 2019 federal income tax returns and received refunds. Most interest payments were received separately from tax refunds. Interest payments are taxable and must be reported on a 2020 federal income tax return. In January 2021, the IRS will send a Form 1099 interest, which is an interest income, to anyone who received an interest of at least $10. New charitable deduction allowance, new this year. Taxpayer who don't itemize deduction can take a charitable deduction of up to $300 for cash contribution made in 2020 to qualify organizations. For more information, people should review publication 526, charitable contributions. 
other refunds related reminders, taxpayers should rely on receiving a refund by a certain date, especially when making major pro purchasing or paying bills. Some tax returns may require additional review and processing may take longer. Refunds for taxpayer claiming the earned income tax credit or additional child tax credit can't be issued before mid-February. This applies to an entire refund, not just the portion associated with this credit. The fastest and most secure way to receive a refund is to combine direct deposit or electronic filing, including the IRS free file program. Taxpayers can track the status of their refund using the Where's My Refund tools. The RS to recalculate taxes on unemployment benefits, refunds to start in May. The legislation signed on March 11 allows taxpayers who earn less than $150,000 in modifying adjusted gross income to exclude unemployment compensation up to $20,400 if married filing jointly and $10,200 for all other eligibility taxpayers. The legislation excludes only 2020 unemployment benefits from taxes. The IR 2021-71 on March 31st, 2021 for those who are already filed, the IRS would do these recalculation in two phases, starting with those taxpayer eligible for the up to 10,200 exclusion. The IRS would then adjust returns for those married filing jointly taxpayers who are eligible for the 20,400 20, exclusion and other with more complex returns. There is no need for the taxpayer to file an amended return unless the calculation made the taxpayer newly eligibility eligible for additional federal credits and deduction, not already included on the original tax return. These taxpayers may want to review their state tax return as well. The new guidance, I can't see the bottom part of there. The new IRS guidance also includes details for those eligible taxpayers who have not yet filed. Scams. What you don't know can hurt you. The refund anticipation loan, which is called RAL, is not your actual refund. It is a short-term loan in anticipation of your income tax refund. The tax preparer prefer the term instant cash advance. When you take out a tax refund anticipation loan advance, you are borrowing money against your tax refund. If your tax refund is less than expected, you will still owe the entire amount of the tax refund anticipation loan advance. You can get the refund in eight to 21 days without paying any extra fees and taking on a tax refund anticipation loan advance. These loans are offered in the amount of 25%, 50%, or 75% of your expected tax refund from $500 to $6,000. You probably do not want to, you do not need to take a refund loan if you file your tax return electronically. You can get your refund very quickly in approximately two to three weeks without getting a loan. If possible, if possible, please afford applying for these types, please avoid applying for these types of loan. They can be very expensive and not worth the cost. Finishing, finishing refers to potential fake emails or website looking to steal your personal information. Remember, the IRS will never initiate contact with you via email about any outstanding tax bill, refund, or economic impact payment. What you can do, if you receive any suspicion, finishing, I would say finishing, emails, forward them to 
and it's here with the email address that you can forward to. Threatening phone calls from the IRS impersonators. The IRS impersonation scams include phone calls, threatening arrest, deportation, or licensing revocation if you don't pay a bogus tax bill. The IRS will never demand immediate payment or ask the finance for financial information over the phone. What you can do, if you receive a phone call, contact the local IRS office to verify whether you owe any taxes. Social media scam. A scammer would use social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, to obtain personal information from you, then use that information to trick you and to provide them with confidential information. For example, the scammer could impersonate a family member, friend, or coworker in any attempt to obtain financial information. And what you can do, be careful publishing confidential information on so social media. Verify the identity of any person or organization that asks you for confidential information. Economic impact payments or tax refund. Theft. Criminal file false tax returns or supply of the bogus information to the IRS to divert refunds or economic payment, economic impact payments to wrong addresses or bank accounts. What you can do, contact a qualified personal professional to help walk you through how to report identity theft to the IRS. Senior fraud. Senior citizens have become more comfortable with various technologies such as social media. This has opened the door for scammers to take advantage of senior citizens by using fake emails, text messages, and fake websites to steal personal information. What you can do, be the eyes and ears for the senior citizen you come in contact with. According to the IRS, a doctor and a cold, whatever. Evidence indicates that senior fraud decreases substantially when a trusted friend or family member takes an interest in the senior's affairs. Hire a professional tax preparer. Here are a few tips to consider. Look for a preparer who is available year round. In the event questions come up about tax return, taxpayers may need to contact the preparer after the filing season is over. As if the preparer has an IRS prepared tax identification number, which is a PTIN number, pay tax prepare return pay Preparers are required to register with the IRS, have a PTIN, and include it on their tax returns. Inquire whether the tax return preparer has a professional credential, which is enroll agent, certified public accountant, or an attorney. Belongs to a professional organization or attends continuing education classes. Because tax laws can be complex, competent tax preparers remain up to date on tax topics. The IRS website has more information regarding national tax professional organizations. Check the preparer's qualifications. Use the IRS Directory of Federal Tax Return Preparers with credentials and select qualifications. These tools can be helped locate and prepare with the preferred qualification. A searchable and sortable listing of the tax preparer registered with the IRS. The directory includes the name, city, state, zip code of attorneys, CPAs, enroll agents, annual filing season program participants, enrolled retirement plan, enrolled retirement plan agents, and enrolled our series. Using a professional tax preparer service. These are some of the advantages I always say. It's really money saving while hiring tax professionals. Would probably cost more than paying for an online tax service. You should be aware that a tax professional has the ability to actually save you money 
on your tax return. By knowing your situation and by being on the top of the current tax rules, a tax professional will be able to identify the possibility of deductions and credits that you may be aware of. And by calculating the value of the hours that will be required for you to complete your own tax filing, you may find that tax professional is well worth the money. Time savings. From start to finish, completing your own tax return will take hours. This time includes organizing your forms and files for completing and submitting your returns, but does not include the time that we'll spend wondering and worrying if you complete your filing correctly. By turning over the responsibility to a tax professional, the time saving is obvious and the reduction in stress will be immiserable. immeasurable. Reduce risk of errors. With extensive training and by staying current with the tax environment, a tax professional will decrease the chances that errors will be made on your tax return. This in turn decreases the likelihood that you will be subject to an audit. A system with audits. While audits are actually quite uncommon in the event that you are audited by the IRS, you can rest assured that your, tech, that your professional tax preparer will have your back. Your tax preparer will be the professional that you turn in case of an audit to the response to an IRS inquiries. Peace of mind. Year after year of tax balance, there's nothing else that will provide you with the peace of mind that you gain from hiring a tax preparer. Your professional tax preparer will know your tax situation which save them preparation time each year, help you in the case of an audit, and finds you de deduction and credits that reduce your tax liability. Knowing that your taxes have been found properly each year is the best way to re reduce stress and eliminate any anxiety about filing. The IRS identified best practice relates to professionals. There are communication with clients, establish, establishing relevant facts, providing client advice, and practice before the Internal Revenue Service. Tax Day 2021 filing deadline. The U.S. Treasury Department and the IRS announced on March 17, 2021, that the federal income tax due date for individual for 2020 tax year will be automatically extended from April 15, 2021 to May 17, 2021. The federal tax filing deadline postponement to March 17, 2021 only applies to individual federal income tax returns and tax payments, otherwise due April 15, 2021. Note that Relief does not apply to estimated tax payments that are due on April 15, 2021. Individual taxpayers who need additional time to file beyond May 17, 2021 deadline can request a filing extension until October 15, 2021 by filing Form 4868. Filing Form 4868 gives taxpayers until October 15, 2021 to file their 2020 tax return, but does not grant an extension of time to pay tax due. In closing, tax professional, we are expected to provide clients with the highest quality representation concerning federal tax issue. Now it's your turn for questions and answers. Anybody have any questions? Okay, I'm still here. I, I've got to pick up another call, but anybody having any um, questions about your own? I mean, you don't have to get into, you know, um, specifics, but anybody having any questions as it relates to in the uh, Internal Revenue Service and filing your income tax? One thing I just suggest, you need to do that, okay? Can you file your taxes? You absolutely, yeah. 
if you'll see, um, I know I've been noting that, you know, a lot of people get, um, you know, you might get by, but you won't get away. Okay. So you should file your, your income tax. And uh, Wendy made the point of, if you don't know how to do, you know, your, your own and you can't do it and you're not sure, you need to hire a professional, not these people who show, you know, I don't know. I know in, in Maywood, there's a, a couple of places that open up, you know, from January to April, and then they're gone after that. I would never use a service like that. I would rather use a service that they're going to be there, you know, 24-7. So, questions. Do we have any questions? Maybe I have one question. Um, yes. Can you, can you hear me okay, Wendy? Yes. Yes. All right. Appreciate your presentation, especially the part about the scammers. They must uh, be successful a lot of the time, or there wouldn't be so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, for the free form for filing, if you use the IRS free form, um, you can use that for short and long and pretty much any kind of filing? Yes. And then the second question is, is there any compatibility or integration possible with um, other proprietary software like Quicken? You know, let's say you keep your notes in Quicken throughout the year and put all your receipts together and so on. They're all electronic. Is that integrated at all with the free form, or is that just uh, with the free form something you have to go line by line and enter it manually? Yes. When you do the free form, that's, you have to do that manually. Like with my services, I am working with bank products, and my software is with Crosslink. Um, so most, most of the time what I tell people when they, especially with small businesses, if you have a Quicken or any type of software that keep up your business expenses, that helps me. But if I have to do it myself and have to create a spreadsheet for that person, the cost is there. Uh, but I prefer someone to come with me with a bank statement with their expense uh, in Quicken or any type of accounting um, software and it helps me to go down straight down that schedule c or 1099 s corp or whatever um but the irs have their own way of doing it when you go through their free file so it is like line by line mm -hmm. okay thank you mm -hmm. anybody else i have a question miss wendy Yes. Um, now it's not for me. I'm Barry asking has that comment. Uh -huh. I'm asking for somebody else. Um, can you just talk to um, people in situations where they've gotten behind in their taxes and um, they want to, you know, make it right, but they're so far behind and they're just afraid the government is just going to come down hard on them. And um, they also receive, you know, messages from these tax services that, you know, promise to help you. So can you just speak to how a person in that situation should, should try to make things right? Okay. Do they just, owe the IRS? I don't think so. Okay. They just haven't filed, probably. Okay, they haven't filed. Um, I have some people that's going I'm dealing with that right now that haven't found in the last three or four years we can do that um because you have up to i think it's three years to um to found if you behind well if you got a refund coming if you don't have a refund coming if you owe they want their money um you can still file those even electronically because we do doing three years if it's uh, if you're behind the three years of electronic. If it's past three years, we will have to file them by paper, which is paper mail. Yeah, well, so, so they can still file their returns. Uh, as far as going through another service, uh, they don't saying, do they don't help do pardon me? Amanda? Oh, you, no, go ahead. We're listening. Okay. As far as them going through other services, I tell people you have to be careful going through other people. Uh, if 
if they're not a tax professional or a CPA or enroll agent uh, trying to get help with these because, you know, you got people doing this as a hustle uh, on the side um, just to make the money. But either way you do this, you should make sure you're looking at the documents that they are they are completing and making sure that they put their name, their business, they EIN number if they don't have a PTIN number. But the IRS is requiring that all tax professionals have a PTIN number, especially if they're collecting funds from clients. We have to have that. Um, and that's part of one of the biggest scams that's going on now. Because uh, what I'm dealing with right now is a lot of people that didn't get their first and second stimulus, especially with seniors. When I put them through, it comes back showing that they've been filed. A lot of these seniors say, I never filed tax before. I just, I'm just filing this because I didn't get my stimulus. So we have to be very careful how we are filing these um, especially the seniors trying to get their money from the stimulus because now we got to find out who are who claiming these people. And that's the same thing with other kids, you know, children, other dependents are being claimed that people don't know they're being claimed by other people taxes and getting this these stimulus. And that's the biggest scam that's going on now. And this is why one of the reasons why the IRS is behind is because of this uh stimulus that's going on. So I'm um, asking everybody just, you know, I mean, I got people that are still waiting on their tax returns right now from February 12th. Wow. They haven't gotten because they're so far behind. It's, okay. it's just like pending out there on their website. What is the term for a uh, tax repair uh, preparer that they are legally bound to be honest uh, with their clients. Code of ethics? No, it's a, there's a specific term that they use. Uh, when did you know? When, when you say say that again. There's a particular term that's used. One one word. To describe a tax preparer, a professional, who is required by law to uh, take care, do nothing to harm their client. Well, um, by law with the IRS, we are supposed to be tax professionals. And to get that information of that person, you can go on the IRS website and look under the IRS professionals. They are listed under there with their EIN numbers, not our PIN numbers, but our EIN numbers. Mm -hmm. And it would tell you how long you've been in service and everything. Um, and this is some things I tell people that I new clients that come to me when they say, Oh, this person did my taxes, but I've been audited. You know, I said, have you signed the documents? And they would say, yes, I signed the document. But when I looked on there, the tax preparer didn't sign the document. And I always tell people, make sure, if you're not sure of these people doing your taxes, you can go on the rs.gov website under professional and look that person up. And, and I just ask people, don't be the ones that come to me or any other tax preparer and you have to have your taxes done and you've been audited because it's, you've been scammed with them putting other stuff on there that you don't not aware of, especially with saying that you own a business. And that's the big scam. People are getting these big refunds because these other tax preparers are putting items on there that should not be on their tax return when some of these people are saying I don't own a tax I don't own a business and they're on there but they've been audited. You have to 
ask them, how are I getting this type of money back? Why am I getting this type of money back? Why am I getting less this year than I get last year? They supposed to go through that, walk you through that. Did you have a follow up, Gary? No, I, uh, Judy and I went through an experience a couple of years ago where we got a, like a $75,000 uh, bill for unpaid taxes. Oh. And we got it resolved eventually by going to the state's attorney, uh, Kwame, not state's attorney, what is he, a state? But Kwame, uh, who's that? Anyway, Attorney General Gary, Attorney General, Illinois yeah. Attorney General, Attorney General. There's a term for people who help, you know, clear up these method things. There, and uh, we eventually got it all back, but only because Kwame's office scared this guy down in Arkansas. Uh, who uh, who was the one really scamming us? Wow! Got it all back. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think did Robin Steger have a question? Robin, I saw you unmute at one point there. Yes, I put it in the chat. But um, going back to um, hey Wendy, hi, how are you, Robin? Good. Um, going back to a person having three years to file back taxes, mm -hmm. if they are found or determined by the IRS to owe back taxes, mm -hmm. do they allow uh, payment arrangements for that repayment? Yes, they do. Yep, you can file, it's a form that you fill out and you just say that you want to make payment arrangement. But I'll tell people, once you put that payment arrangement date on that saying, you said, okay, I want to start in March, March 15th. Mm -hmm. You say March 15th, the next, that the 15th of every month, they're going to be deducting what you owe to them. How much you say, it's like you said, I owe $3,000, but I want to pay $100 every month. Don't say I want to pay on the 15th and you can't pay on the 15th because now, you have kind of you're bound to that date exactly and then they would kind of make let you go ahead and uh, reschedule it but you only got one time plus you have to pay a penalty of that which is five hundred dollars even so if, if they and want to reschedule that payment there's a fee they make you pay to start all over again so the fee is not based on a percentage of the amount you owe. It's a flat fee of $500? If you late on that payment arrangement. Oh, my God. Okay. That's on top of what you owe. Okay. And they did just determine the increments that you repay them, or you set up an arrangement mm -hmm. based on what you can repay? You set month. up that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But just make sure whatever date you put on there, that's the date that you can pay them every month. Okay. All right. Wendy, as a follow-up to that, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that if you're within the three years and you do not owe money, but the IRS owes you, there is no penalty for late filing. Am I right. correct? Okay. Yes, you're correct. Um, second, on the, on the business aspect, um, Oh, I forgot the second question. <laughs> anyone else? <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Oh, I know what it is. Um, you know, for business income, let's say you've got your regular day job, but you do some moonlighting, whatever it is, you've earned some extra income. I think most people throw that on a Schedule C, even if they're incorporated. At mm -hmm. what point do you, are you required to file a separate filing as a corporation and not include the income under Schedule C as unrelated wow. business income? Now, if you're going to do, and you're talking about doing a corporation? Well, let's, yeah, let's say you've been incorporated, you didn't generate a lot of funds through that, mm -hmm. and you just included it in Schedule C for some years, you know, mm -hmm. Schedule C for the business income. But, but at what point are you required, or maybe you aren't, are you required at some point to file your 
corporate tax return separate from your 1040 and not use Schedule C? Right. If you're going to do an incorporation and if you're not making enough money, you can use the Schedule C. But for some, I think you could do it for so, I think two or three years at the most. But I always tell people, if you're not seeing yourself making enough money to go on the corporation, then you should go sole proprietorship or um, what's the other term? Uh, can you think right now? But you, sh you, you can go back and delete, you know, obviously to a uh, S Corp or a corporation. Because I've done that. I was incorporated and then I went down to um, sole proprietorship. Got it. Yeah, because you can change. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We've got about 10 minutes, uh, but, you know, providing their questions. Uh, this has been helpful to a lot of people, I think, Wendy. Appreciate your being here today. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that anyone has before we uh, um, adjourn our meeting today? Again, uh, Karen Yarbrough's betting a thousand with these great speakers and presenters that are relevant and expert, and it's uh, been enlightening, minimally enlightening, and often, um, you know, gratifying and really helpful for us personally with issues that we might face in our own personal lives. Um, Susan, did you have a question? I think we've covered all of the announcements that we needed here. Just a reminder, some of you might um, also for quarter four to take care of that. Jamika, did you have uh, any other comments regarding membership? I'd love to. Um, our neighbor actually fell right in the middle of our introduction and I called the ambulance and was out there until the uh, paramedics showed up. So that's in the middle of our meeting where we got a little bit uh, off balance here for Bonnie and I. Um, uh, Jamika, I just wonder if you just have a couple quick notices regarding membership. We have two candidates. I think we have a request for another application. We have another prospect. Um, are you still there, Jamika? Well, you know, we're we're open to um, new full-fledged members that will be with us as a, a regular full Rotary member. And then also there are many other ways to uh, participate in uh, the work that we do to improve our community, both locally and globally. And that could be participating in fundraisers. It might be a, a boots on the ground volunteer that joins us when we're doing village cleanup or other projects, um, service projects through our club where we're hands on. and. Um, and there's also, uh, if any of you are in an area, maybe you don't live close to us, but you'd like some assistance finding a local Rotary Club that you might consider joining or attending to see how they operate, we can help you with that as well. We have a lot of tools to get you the Rotary Club closest to your home or place of work. Additionally, if you're interested in forming a new club, we can help you with that through a number of various strategies. Again, hooking you up with a club near where you want to start a club or possibly even with board approval, considering you a satellite of our own organization until you would grow to the size necessary to be an independent club. Satellites are just eight members minimum, and uh, you would operate under the parent or host club until such time as you grew to, and the numbers escape me, I know it's 20 or more, it might be 25, I think it's 20 members before you can become an independent Rotary Club. 35,000 clubs around the world and 1.3 million members. So it's quite an organization and we're proud to be a, a part of it. And we're proud to have you as our guest today as well. Uh, the number, the email address was up earlier in the program for Maywood Proviso Rotary Club at gmail.com. So write to us, contact any friends or others you know in the club if any of the things I just mentioned are interesting to you. Again, Godspeed and have a wonderful day as Karen Yarbrough said in her opening reflection, um, this is a new day. Every day is a new day, and sometimes we need to be reminded of that, that it's a clean slate and a blessing from God that each day we can start anew. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day.